Welcome to a special World Series edition of Fox 11's political show, The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson. We begin with the mooch. How's that for a message? Anthony Scaramucci. 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 The mooch. The mooch. The mooch. The mooch. Anthony Scaramucci is here. His new book is a hit, and there's a movie coming too. Also, an unlikely pair. Ann Coulter and Hassan Piker tackle immigration, bombs, and hopefully not each other. The issue is starts right now. Welcome to The Issue Is, and welcome back to one of our favorite guests, Anthony Scaramucci. Alex, such, such a good, such a real pleasure to be, be here. I, I love your opening. It was great. Uh, thank you. He has a new book out. It is called Trump, The Blue Collar President. It's currently a top 10 book on Amazon.com's list of political books. Let's start, though, with the developing story that's really been making headlines all week, which is these bombs that have been sent to some of the most prominent Democratic politicians and liberal activists in the country, a suspect taken into custody this morning. Those are some of the folks who have been targeted this week. Um, some of the questions coming out of this, these are all folks that President Trump rhetorically targets all the time. Do you think he in some way is responsible for what's happening well, here? Well, no, l listen, this is a mental health issue, so I don't think he's personally responsible, but I will say this. If we dial back the rhetoric in the society on both sides, that would include Maxine Wall. Waters, uh, President Trump, and everybody involved, I think it's better for the society. I just think that the president's doing an amazing job, and I know he's getting hit hard in the media. The Harvard study says that he's 92% of the people are attacking him. Uh, but if he just dials it back a little bit, Alex, I think he's going to be, you know, in the mid-50s. I just want to point this out. Three weeks during the Kavanaugh situation, the president was really off the bird, so to speak, in terms of the media, and his poll numbers started to rise. So my recommendation to him in the White House is dial it back a little bit. Your policies are great, and uh, things will go well for you if you just dial it back a little bit. So you think some of his rhetoric is unhelpful? I do, and I've said that. I said that to him. I've said that to Sarah Sanders. I've said that to Bill Shine. Uh, you have to remember that... Uh, Sycophancy is selfishness and self-preservation. Loyalty and the word honesty are connected to each other. And so for me, I really want the president to do well. I want his team to do well. And I think it's important that we talk to him and his team honestly about what they could do better. Uh, there's this documentary coming out about you that you didn't Brutal. produce. Brutal. <laughs> but Brutal. They, they, in it, you talk about him and talk about this concept of sort of his New York values and, and his New York sensibility. Let's take yeah. a look at that. Donald Trump is a New Yorker, so what does he have embedded in his New York DNA? Something that I fully appreciate. He's brash, he's outspoken. Other New Yorkers get New Yorkers, right? So when he's saying cuckoo things that are cuckoo to people that are unorthodox in the political system, as a New Yorker, I'm laughing. So that's that's okay, his so documentary. That's, that's two years ago, but boy, it's so true today. Yeah, and, and in your book, um, and you, you, you cut a lot of curse words out of there, which yeah, I'm well, very grateful to you yeah. for, because my mom is so mad about this documentary. She's like, "Who taught you to curse like that?" I said, uh, "Ma, that would be you and yeah, Dad, yeah. just so you know." But <laughs> clearly, anyway, she doesn't yeah. talk to you very often. Then. Oh my God! So uh, let's talk for a moment, though, about your book, because it's called uh, "Trump: The Blue Collar President," and and yep. in it, you you talk about his appeal to people in in the middle of the country. A lot no of question. folks here in Southern. California specifically don't understand that. Uh, and some people have say that on the coast people live in a bubble. But try to explain for people why people in the middle of the country relate to him so, so much. So what I would say to my friends on the coast is that there's probably been 30 years of a vacuum of advocacy for blue collar people. And so uh, the left wing is focused on the poor and the environmental issues and social issues and the right wing if you want to be critical of them, and focus on the wealthy. And so there's been this huge vacuum in the middle. And what the president did, whether you like him or not, is that he started to talk to those people. He went to Michigan. He went to Pennsylvania. He went to Wisconsin. And so the most remarkable thing about what he did was he hijacked the Republican Party uh, against the wishes of the establishment. And then, Alex, he stole the base 
of the Repub of the Democratic Party, and he moved it over to the Republicans. And so uh, I try to explain that in the book from my vantage point. I grew up with a dad who was an hourly worker. I watched my mother take his lunch pail and put it in the refrigerator every night, and he got up at 4.10 in the morning and went to work. He ran a heavy crane and a payloader, and he worked 42 years at the same company. And we grew up in the middle class. I would never dishonor my dad by telling you we grew up poor, but those very same people today are poor. Uh, we went from the aspirational working class society to the desperational one in about 35 years. And so what I would tell my friends on the coast is please, if you're a Democrat or a Republican, switch the product line and start focusing on middle and lower middle class people. And you're going to do a lot better. And so whether you like the president or not, he saw that. He gravitated to it, and I write about it in my book as to why he was capable of doing it. Well, critics say, though, that he's lying to a lot of those people. You've yeah. referred to him as an intentional liar. Are yeah, the president's li Are but, President Trump's lies damaging to democracy? I'm, I'm, I'm taking coaching from your next guest, Ann Coulter, on like what to say about the president. I'm getting a lot of trouble for that because he's a pufferist. He likes to exaggerate stories. He reminds me of my grandfather where but is never let the facts get in the way of a really good story. But, you know, he has a tendency to stretch things. And the point that I was trying to make and the left and the media is attacking me for this is that I'm saying, hey, he's lighting you guys up by saying these things in an exaggerated or a puffery sort of a way to get you guys to be like hall monitors, not you specifically, but I'm just talking about left-leaning media people, get you to be like hall monitors to check him and fact check him, because what it does is the base gets galvanized by that. You know, if you're getting your lunch money stolen in the cafeteria, you can't call the hall monitor. You got to get together with your friends and, 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 and take the person on that way. That's the point I was trying to make. The last time you were here, we talked about the issue of immigration and family separation, and you expressed some discomfort with the president's position on that. Now I we broke, have this. I broke with yeah. him from that. And so, so did Melania and so did Ivanka. And People now, that really like the president slash love the president would tell the president the truth. That is a disastrous policy for you. Well, now we have this migrant caravan, which is coming mm -hmm. towards the United States, maybe in a month or so. Um, what should be the U.S. response to this? And is this as big a deal as the president seems to say, calling it a national emergency? Well, it's, it's a big deal to him because he's trying to galvanize his voters. He's trying to get his voter participation up into the midterms. Presidents have a hard time doing that. Uh, President Obama, by his own words, was shellacked in the 2010 midterm elections. And so President Trump is trying to come up with items uh, or totems to use to get his base out to vote. Here's the only thing I would say, and he's a compassionate person, so am I, and I know you are. If there are women and children in that caravan, my guess is, is that they're running from something. They're fearful of something. And so as Americans, and we both believe in the concept of American values and the generosity of America, uh, let's look at it with some level of humanism. Okay. Uh, that's different than some of the language being used about it. Okay. Uh, we're going to do something called the name game, which is going to, it's okay. a little say my name. I know Beyonce is one of your favorites. All right. Uh, so we're going to say I've done some, interpretive some, some dance people's... before, so yeah. I like Beyonce, actually. Okay. Okay. Some, uh, names, and, and if you can give me one word or a very short phrase of what comes to mind when we say them, okay? okay. We start with the president, President Donald Trump. Scary smart. Uh, Vice President Mike Pence. Super loyal. Uh, the chief of staff, John Kelly. Not my kind of guy. <laughs> Steve Bannon. Adolf. Adolf Bannon. Wow. Uh, former President Barack Obama. Nice guy missing what's going on in the society right now. Uh, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. Uh, Should have worked harder in the last election. Omarosa. Omarosa, I didn't cry, just so you know. <laughs> Finally, Michael Avenatti. Um, he's having a rough two weeks. But I wouldn't underestimate him. He's a fierce competitor. Yeah, and one of your friends that you hung out I with. I like Michael. Look, let me tell you something. You got the World Series in town. You know, David Ortiz was friends with Derek Jeter. Right. Okay, they used to go at it like animals on the field, but they liked each other, okay? I, I respect Michael uh, Avenatti's persistence and his determination, and I know the Republicans go crazy on me because I like the guy. Big deal. You know what we should do? Try to get along a little bit better. All right, we want to get to know you a little better with what we call personal issues. So we're going to uh -oh. put 30 seconds on the clock and uh, get some uh, information about you. All right, ready? Okay, So ahead. we begin with your favorite band. Uh, YouTube, but also Billy Joel. Favorite movie? Uh, Braveheart, but then also Goodfellas. Favorite Star Wars character? Uh, that's got to be uh, Boba Fett. Uh, favorite athlete? 
favorite athlete, uh, well, that's a really good one. I'm going to say Tom Seaver because I'm still a kid at heart. Favorite alcoholic drink? Uh, Tito's Vodka, and then if I'm in a good mood, uh, Cristal Champagne. All-time favorite president? All-time favorite president, there's no question, George Washington. Uh, he inspired us, and he left the presidency. He could have been a monarch. And he took what General Cincinnati said, the great Roman general, he said, I want to return to my farm. Well, and I uh, respect him enormously. You're a fighter. And, you got and some so California we got a little, Chris, yeah. little Christina Aguilera for us. And we hope okay. the Dodgers are also fighters. Okay, I'm so going we're, tomorrow we're giving, night. We're giving you a, Dude, a, so a Red LA. Sox, the Red Sox are a machine, okay? So you got to disrupt them a little bit, okay? And I am actually a Met fan, and I'm a long-suffering Met fan, but I got my son with me. I'll be at the game tomorrow night. And look at me, look. There we go. Taking right. a bite out of the World Series. All Anthony right. Scaramucci the up icing, next. The icing is hey, quite good. I hey, hope hey, I hope hey. that bite wasn't what the Red Sox are going to do to you guys. Okay. Okay? I hope that's not going to happen. <laughs> up next, a debate over immigration and more. Two fighters are joining us. Ann Coulter, Hassan Piker. They're going to be with us when we come back. Uh, we're looking forward to that. Stay with us. More of the issue is. It's time to think hard about how to vote. People already voting by mail in California. Election Day is November 6th. Welcome to a panel, and what a great panel we have this week. Ann Coulter is the author of 12 New York Times, 13, be 13 best-selling New York Times book. Her latest is called Resistance is Futile, How the Trump-Hating Left Lost Its Collective Mind. Hassan Piker, one of the most influential progressive voices online. He's the youngest of the Webby Award-winning Young Turks. His videos have been seen and shared by millions in social media. Both are some of the most articulate spokespeople for their side, so we're excited to have both of you on the issue as welcome. Uh, immigration, one of the most important issues to both of you. Uh, we now have this migrant caravan, which is moving from Latin America through Mexico, expected to come to the U.S. maybe in a month or two. Um, what should be the U.S. policy towards it? Um, we should invent a time machine, go back and have Trump fulfill his promise to build a wall. This is why his voters wanted a wall, so we don't have to go through this every few months. And if Democrats were smart, the theme of my book, Resistance is Futile, they're doing all the wrong things. The way you'd go after Trump is by saying you haven't fulfilled your promises. What have you done? You've cut taxes. You're going back to the old Republican playbook. Um, I hope he will do it. Maybe if Democrats take the House, which it looks like they will, if they take the House, maybe it'll make him mad and he'll finally fulfill his number one campaign promise. But to keep going through this every two months for the rest of our lives, and he's not going to be president forever, this is why we need a wall. Until then, I mean, sending troops to the border, which he says he's going to do, it sounds tough, but it isn't doing anything. The, the military, they're all just, you know, handing out the, here's how you sign up for welfare. They're not stopping them there. That's why we want to wall. So, Hassan, is, is building a wall the solution? No, absolutely not. Also, what difference does it make whether we build a wall or not? These are legal asylum seekers coming in the caravan. It's not like these people are coming to cross the border or jump over the Mexican border. I feel like if they were trying to sneak into the country, they'd probably be doing a better job and not come in such high numbers uh, coming in uh, after escaping violence in their countries. And then, on top of that, this notion that they're, that Anne is snuck in, uh, that, that uh, they're, they have welfare checks uh, waiting for them at the border is also preposterous. It's proven over and over again that immigrants contribute far more than they take uh, to the U.S. economy. And uh, I think there was uh, 1,436 economists from all different backgrounds that wrote an open letter to Donald Trump advising him that immigration is a net benefit. It's, it's virtually every single economist agrees on this. And? Um, well, none, none of these are asylum cases or they'd stop in the first country they get to. The idea of asylum is something like there's a holocaust, there's a potato famine. No, this is how these people always live, which is why all of different countries want to come to, oh, the biggest welfare state in the world. Um, that is the United States and get welfare checks. And yeah, OK, you got economists to sign a letter. Dumping poor people on America is not making us better. They are far more likely to be receiving welfare. And that's just your average illegal immigrant and immigrant are way higher to be accepting government assistance how than would American. They, how would they accept Asylum, government assistance? Um, applicants don't have to wait at all. They instantly get given food, housing, everything. But they aren't asylum cases. These aren't people fleeing 
one corrupt, you know, I'm trying to, they're trying to kill you. Otherwise, they'd get to Mexico and say, Phew, home free, I'm in Mexico. No, they want to come to the biggest welfare state in the world. I mean, the American welfare state might be big in totality as far as our population goes, but it's definitely not as encompassing as plenty of other European nations. But, but that's besides the point. You mentioned welfare. Can you describe to me specifically how uh, undocumented citizens take advantage of our robust welfare state? They can't walk to Sweden. They can walk to this no, country. No, 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 but you're not answering my question. They can also question. walk to Mexico, and they're not stopping there. Um, okay, but you're not answering my question. Well, you if say coming asylum. To the US asylees are entitled to everything citizens are entitled Oh, so now they're asylum to. seekers, because previously you no, were they using aren't, the perspective they that they aren't cases. asylum speakers. Uh, no, asylum I am saying seekers. they do not qualify. They should not qualify, but they are classified as asylees, as you say, and that's the whole panoply. In fact, they get more than, than citizens. They have okay, housing built for them. Undocumented citizens as a whole, because you have such strong opinions on this, and look, you've been doing this for longer than I've been alive, so I would love to hear your perspective on exactly how undocumented citizens take advantage of our supposedly robust welfare state. We know they're massively collecting food stamps, not health true. care. It is 100% true. Absolutely not true. The Schooling, only thing you can say is maybe they're rooms. using health care. Yeah, okay, the, the health care, as far as emergency rooms, approximately is 0.09% uh, of the entire health care budget. Schools, English as a second language classes. All these schools across America, oh, sorry, there's going to be no Christmas pageant this year. We had 16 English as a second language classes. Um, are you making the assumption that Latin American countries are somehow not in, Christian and therefore or don't want Christmas. What does this have to what do with have Christmas? Well, you're, you're really you're that, not following the gonna argument. Have to, we're going to have to leave it there, but we will have more debate, and um, we're going to play this song. Why can't we be friends? Because that's probably a good theme as well. A reminder that uh, our show is available as a podcast. Just search for the issue is wherever you search for podcasts. And coming up next, the two of them are going to discuss uh, President Trump and whether he bears some responsibility for this week's bombs that were sent to Democrats. Stay with us for that. Welcome back to The Issue Is. Welcome back to our panel. Ann Coulter, Hassan Piker are both with us. One man now under arrest uh, for these bomb threats that have been targeting li liberal activists. Apparently, uh, this Florida resident, Cesar Sayak, uh, faces five counts up to 58 years in prison. Apparently a Trump supporter uh, who did all this. Hassan, do you think the president bears any responsibility for this man's actions? Absolutely. And it's not just the president who has decried violence and talked specifically about specific acts of violence against counter protesters, telling them that he will pay for their legal fees, talking about how if he shot someone on Fifth Avenue, that his supporters would still love him, talking about how the Second Amendment people will take care of it, and also specifically targeting not only CNN, but also Maxine Waters, to say it, claiming that Maxine Waters better watch out. Um, these, sort of, these sort of statements obviously are impactful. Um, especially when considering the, the current political climate in this country. So it's not just Donald Trump that's responsible, however. It's also the media apparatus that is, that is, not, claim, that, that is not holding Donald Trump accountable. Anne? Um, no, I mean, all the things Trump says. When an audience laughs, it's a joke. Um, none of this is inciting is inciting language, talking about shooting somebody on Fifth Avenue. Come on, it's a joke. Um, it, historically, political violence has come from the left, um, which is why a lot of people thought it. Which it is could why have you have been. the weekends, for example, instead of anyway. Uh, I'm like still a talking yeah. um, work week, but so it's been you know back to the Weatherman, Sacco and Vanzetti, um, the anti-war protests. You had the, of course the attack on Steve Scalise. You have all the anti-globalists. You know the Seattle protests. It's just historically the uh, Bernadine Dorn and Bill Ayers. This has historically been something that's come from the left. Um, so what does that have to do with what's going on right now, though, with this specific that, instance of violence? This, as I was saying. Um, and there have also been a lot of hate hoaxes. So what was surprising here is, yeah, okay, you got yourselves a Trump supporter. Um, also, um, at least half Filipino. So it looks like, you know, a lot. Democrats thought all these immigrants coming in where political violence is way more prevalent than it is in this country. They thought, oh, they'll always be on our side, like Sacco and Vanzetti. But some of them are going to be Trump supporters. I think we might finally get liberals to oppose the caravan by saying, oh, they don't care about MS-13. They don't care Native about American. child molesters, still talking. But tell them there's some Trump supporters in that caravan and they'll be down on the border with a Minuteman. Okay. Right. Uh, so you're real quick. <laughs> okay. Really quickly. 
Um, none of what you said has anything to do with this specific instance whatsoever. And it is undeniable that Donald Trump, in some instances jokingly, in some instances very real, uh, has incited violence. You yourself have specifically incited violence by saying, we need more violence from the Trump people. Were you joking when you said that? I or never said that. That was a tweet. It's literally we a tweet that we can look up. We need more violence from the Trump people? Well, I'm right. glad you're studying me. You ought to study me more closely. All right, <laughs> we're going to have to leave it there. Hopefully we can bring everybody together, though, with the Dodgers. We've got uh, we've got a little bit of oh, Dodgers <laughs> donuts. <laughs> Try to bring this group together, as we say. I love LA. A final word about the Dodgers. Don't when give we it come to back. the players. We <laughs> <laughs> want them in their top okay. four. It's been a blast hanging out at Dodger Stadium. There I am throwing the ball around with Mayor Eric Garcetti. Uh, so we wish our boys in blue well. And we thank you so much for watching The Issue Is. I'm Alex Michelson. Have a good night, a great weekend. We'll see you back next week. Go Dodgers!